It was the most multicultural of the European empires, with 15 different language versions of its national anthem. I'm talking about the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and today I'm going to look at the standards and variety of some of its uniforms. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about Austro-Hungarian infantry uniforms of the First World War. The basic uniform and equipment of an Austro-Hungarian infantryman in 1914 was introduced in 1907 and 1908 as part of a program of modernization. Uniform pieces were made in heavy hechtgrau, grey-coloured wool, while leather items were in natural colours that darkened over time. Reflecting the dual nature of the empire, there were some differences between Austrian and Hungarian units' uniforms. Uniform differences were based on things like a uh, regiment's origin, traditions, or branch of service. A Slovene regiment, for example, would have worn the German uniform since Slovenia was part of the Austrian half of the empire, while Ulan cavalry would have had a more Polish look since the Ulans were based in Galicia and southern Polish regions and had the traditions of the Polish cavalry. The vast majority of the infantry would have worn either the German or Hungarian uniform, but there were exceptions with regards to accessories. The Polish legions, for example, wore the Majauka hat, and Bosnian infantry regiments wore the Fez. From August 1915, the Hecht Grau color began to be replaced by the more neutral Feld Grau, field grey. This was for purposes of concealment, and this color would be in use for the remainder of the war. The Feld Kappe, the field cap, was also initially made from Hechtgrau wool and also changed to Feldgrau in 1915. These usually sported black leather visors, fastened at the front with two small buttons, and were designed for comfort and protection from the sun or a light rain, and offered little protection from missiles of any sort. On the crown of the cap was a zinc cockade bearing either FJI, Franz Joseph Imperator, or IFJ for Hungarian units. Officers of Jagger units had a small Jagger horn beneath that badge. These caps were largely replaced by 1917 with the M17 Stahlhelm, which was a copy of the German version with slight modifications to the color and the chin strap. But for a time, they had their own variants, most notably the Berndorf helmet. Although it wasn't common, some infantry wore a version of the field service cap without the visor. The Bosnian Herzegovinian infantry regiments and Jagger battalions wore two versions of the Fez, red-brown for off-duty and parade wear, and the grey for field service. The Fez was made of lamb's wool and also had a tassel of lamb's wool, and those tassels were black for the red Fez and grey for the grey Fez. Non-Muslim officers of these regiments and battalions were permitted to wear the standard cap. The soldiers' tunics were of pretty elegant appearance, but they were heavy, and the standing collar was really uncomfortable on the neck. Later in the war, stand and fall collars would be introduced for comfort, as well as external pockets for practicability. In 1914, though, a rigid collar was worn under the tunic to prevent the soldier's neck from rubbing against the tunic collar. The tunic was fastened with a row of six concealed zinc buttons that were buttoned all the way to the bottom. A shoulder roll was worn on the right shoulder to prevent the soldier's rifle from slipping off. Now, on the collar itself, the men wore brightly colored cloth tabs, which were reduced in size from 1916 on. These were the vestiges of the 18th century regimental facing colors, and a regiment was meant to be identified by the color of its collar tabs and buttons. But you know, this could be a really difficult process, like in 1914 they used 10 different shades of red. The Austrian infantrymen were issued with straight-cut woolen trousers. These were supported by braces at the hip and were ankle length, where they were fastened by a pair of gaiters. The Hungarian infantry had something different. They wore tight-fitting breeches with a distinctive braided knot, a vitus cortes, upon the thighs. The fly of the trousers was closed by four zinc buttons and there were two shallow hip pockets. To make these trousers fit better and be more comfortable to each individual, a waist clasp was located in the rear. The standard boots were heavy leather hobnailed boots. Other basic leather equipment was the belt, secured around the waist by a brass buckle bearing the double eagle emblem of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. On either side of the buckle, the soldier wore two ammunition pouches. Each of these carried two clips of five rounds, so there were 40 rounds in total. 
I have to point out that already by 1915, the strain of war on the economy was beginning to be a thing and leather items began to be replaced by canvas or cloth replacements. Food was carried in a cloth haversack suspended across the man's chest. In 1914, the infantryman carried a tornister, a field pack made of leather on his back. Here, he stored his extra ammunition, extra clothing, and other items that would not be needed on the march. This was expensive and uncomfortable, so in late 1915, it was replaced by a more durable canvas rucksack. The badges of rank were worn by all of the land forces of the empire and were basically identical. Rank was indicated with stars and lace on a collar patch or directly on the tunic collar. When the war began, officer stars were silver or gold, and non-commissioned officers were of white bone or celluloid. But as the war progressed, and raw materials grew scarcer and scarcer, these were made of metal or cloth. The lace, originally of metallic thread, was replaced by yellow or white silk. Collar patches themselves were often replaced by a narrow vertical strip behind the rank badge in the core or regimental colored cloth. Junior NCOs had white celluloid stars, while senior NCOs had white celluloid stars and yellow lace. The senior officer cadet and the deputy officer also had a metal-plated star. Captains and lieutenants wore silver or gold embroidered stars in the regimental or branch of service color. The senior officers had 3.3 centimeters of silver or gold lace on the collar or collar patch, which corresponded to the regiment or branch button color. Embroidered stars were in contrasting colors to the lace. For example, gold stars on silver lace. They also had gold lace on the cuffs of their service uniforms that was again 3.3 centimeters wide. For all ranks below general, the collar patch was 8.6 centimeters long and 4 centimeters high. The officers of the general staff had a black patch over a larger scarlet patch with the scarlet bordering the black. Generals had silver embroidered stars and 3.3 centimeters of gold lace on the collar or collar patch. That patch was 11.2 centimeters long and 4 centimeters high. Generals officers patches and field officers patches differed because the generals had an extra 2.6 centimeters of cloth. That was the main way of telling them apart. On the double-breasted service uniform, gold lace 5.3 centimeters wide was worn on the cuffs. Of course, this is only a very general look at the Austro-Hungarian infantry uniforms. Other branches of service had other uniforms and variations. Special branches had theirs. It's quite interesting to look up, and there are loads of photos out there, so you can see a lot of the differences. Lots of paintings or photos of the officers and the men proudly wearing them, and of course, many photos of the dead soldiers, which was unfortunately the fate of thousands upon thousands of them. Thank you, Michael Hayes, for helping us with the research for this episode, and also a big thanks to Glenn Jewison and Jörg Steiner, who run a website that documents the Austro-Hungarian land forces. You can find the link in the description. Click here for our Austro-Hungarian weapons special. See you next time.